Accidents in which cars involuntarily land in water often result in the death of one or more passengers. The following film was made in order to increase the chances of survival for passengers. In order to study the behavior of a car landed in water, various types of passenger cars were catapulted into the water in different ways and at varying speeds. This methodology determined that practically all of them remained afloat for a longer or a shorter time, some for even several minutes. They then sink in the direction of the motor or the heaviest point of weight. We here see an empty vehicle with a frontal motor sinking in deep water. The air, keeping the car afloat, is suppressed by the inflowing water and escapes via the rear. Cars that sink in water that is deeper than their length are recovered in decreasing order. Sticking upright in the mud, on their four wheels, on their roof, and rarely on their side. In shallow water, they are usually found on their wheels. The duration of time afloat depends on the amount of air present in the vehicle. This amount is mainly determined by the damage done to the bodywork and the nature of the load. The influencing damage is usually caused by preliminary contact with one or other obstacle, for example, the result of a collision. Cars can in this way land in water in different positions, be it on their side or on their roof. Flung open doors or broken windows will cause a rapid escape of air, while a dented roof depletes the air bubble, considerably reducing the floating time. The angle at which the car lands in the water also has its influence. The impact on the water depends on the speed and can be very hard. It is comparable to a sudden stop in which the vehicle comes to stand still within two meters. Without safety belts, the passengers are flung forwards with possible heavy injuries as a result. This will primarily be so for the front seat passengers, who will have their heads bashed against the front window, causing possible loss of consciousness. Safety belts fasten occupants in place, avoiding injuries and increasing considerably the possibility of rescue. Wear your belt and increase your chances of survival. The Flemish Life Saving Federation's course, Car in the Water, is pedagogically organized, theory and practice going hand in hand. Following the registrations comes a didactic video film in which the principal guidelines are already incorporated and the exercises shown with an accompanying commentary by a teacher. monitors conduct further initiating exercises. A fair share of attention is also dedicated to underwater exercises such as apnea and swimming with open eyes. Unfasten the safety belt, open a window, grab the roof tightly with both hands and get out of the car, head first. Once out, maintain contact with the car and pull out the remaining passengers. Position non-swimmers or incapacitated person on the roof to wait their rescue.
Should you land with your vehicle in water, the golden rule is remain calm. Release your safety belt. Exit from the car as soon as possible via the windows, head first and face upward. Keep contact with the car and pull the remaining occupants out. Non-swimmers or those who are incapacitated can be positioned on the roof to await rescue. Escape from a sinking car via the windows is much more difficult than from a floating car. This demonstration shows how the water flows forcefully in via the open window, terribly handicapping an escape and causing the car to sink rapidly. Quick action can often facilitate the pulling out of a child simultaneously. A forceful kickoff from the car will help your ascent to the surface. It is also possible to escape from a floating car by the door, but then one must give a forceful shoulder push, possibly assisted by a fellow passenger. What then is the procedure? Unlatch the door, using the shoulder, push with full force and open the door wider. Get out of the car, maintaining contact with it and pull out the other occupants, placing non-swimmers on the roof to await their rescue. Should one be unable to escape via the windows, then this must be done from a door. Much strength is required for this because of the pressure of the water. This demonstration shows how difficult this is and how the water swiftly surging in hinders an escape, shortens considerably the time afloat and lessens the possibilities of rescue. If escape during the time afloat fails, one must continue to try to exit the car as quickly as possible. Remain breathing for as long as possible in the reducing air bubble formed against the roof. Once the vehicle has run full, it will be easier to open the doors to get out. A firm grip on the bodywork will facilitate your being able to assist other occupants to escape. In shallow depths, it is possible that an air bubble of two to three centimeters forms. You can only breathe in it with your mouth pressed against the roof. In many cases, it may be impossible to open windows and doors. The only possible rescue measure left is to smash in a window. Use a rescue hammer for this, but then not like this but by tightening and releasing with that effect. Should you not have such a hammer at hand, your fire extinguisher is always available. The bottom of this extinguisher can be used to smudge in a window. A rescue hammer or the bottom of a fire extinguisher can be useful in the case of jammed windows and doors. A floating car behaves much the same way as a boat. With a bit of effort, it can be pulled and pushed to a shallow place, for instance. Possible injured persons must be simultaneously surfaced with the rescuer. Attempting to first swim to the surface for an intake of air and then diving back to rescue occupants remaining behind is only feasible in less deep waters. 
Continue to breathe in the decreasing air bubble while you release safety belts and open the door. If you haven't succeeded in exiting first, it may be possible to get out of the car together with a drowning person. Take a forceful push off from the bodywork and bring the victim ashore for further treatment. Where the earth meets the sea, where the waves meet the sky, where people meet the water, we'll be standing by. Where Training session terminates with a complete lesson in reanimation. All those who have successfully concluded the course are awarded a diploma and a badge. Bronze is given for an escape from a floating car and silver for that from a sunken car. Gold is reserved for the course in open water. The Flemish Life Saving Federation takes all possible precautions for the safety of the exercises, which appear perhaps rather risky to the viewer. Next to a reanimation team, five certified divers are on hand at all times to assure the safety of all.